Bug hunting just became way easier and cheaper than ever before. And no, I'm not talking about insects. I'm talking about uncovering serious vulnerabilities that could cripple companies, infrastructure, and your personal electronics. Today we're going to cover the CH341A SPI Flash Reader USB device, what it's used for, and some ethical implications when using this device in a cybersecurity setting. Note. We do not encourage you to use this device on systems that you do not have access or authority to test with. We always emphasize to maintain ethical hacking principles when discussing any sort of white, gray, black box testing or penetration testing. Please use this information responsibly. So, before we dive into the video, let me introduce myself first. My name is Josh, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid cybersecurity ethical hacking, or cloud pro fast. So, what is this USB thing? The CH341A is a USB interface chip that can emulate UART communication, standard parallel port, memory parallel port, and synchronous serial, I2C SPI. In real-world applications, this device is commonly used to flash BIOS and other firmware on common household electronics, which require the Serial Peripheral Interface SPI protocol. So why do we care about firmware during bug hunting in the first place? Two main reasons that go hand in hand. First off, having access to source code allows us to find how something works. If we know how something works, we can figure out how it's not supposed to work a whole lot easier. The second reason is, when we find a vulnerability, sometimes we can't quite identify what's happening because the behavior is inconsistent or abnormal. Having access to the code allows us to track what's happening when we're poking at things and trying to make our subject do what it's not intended to. Normally, to access the firmware on a SPI flash chip, you would need to desolder the chip from the board, but this risks mucking up the board and damaging your SPI chip, rendering the device inoperable. The CH341A makes this a whole lot easier, allowing for us to read the memory off the chip using the SPI protocol without having to desolder the chip. But why does any of this matter in bug bounties and threat hunting? When testing Internet of Things and integrated systems, we often don't have much information on the code that runs their basic functions. These devices often use microcontrollers which have a set of instructions pre-programmed which cannot be changed without physical access to the chip. Now, with this little USB stick, we can start hunting for those hidden bugs. Devices such as routers often use outdated code to handle key functions such as packet encryption, secure socket layer protocol, etc. With the CH341A, we can read the firmware on these chips to help us discover some serious vulnerabilities. Being able to read firmware on integrated chips is already a huge advantage for ethical hackers and security researchers alike. Not only does the CH341A have red capabilities, but it can also be used to load firmware to SPI chips, which allow for write functionality, which is many of them. Now you may be asking, why would anyone want to go this far for changing code that the majority of hackers and threat actors may not be looking into? Well, most chips flashed are the chips that contain the BIOS firmware for motherboards. Oftentimes with older motherboards, the BIOS is significantly out of date or have other issues when it comes to less common computer systems. Being able to load new firmware to outdated motherboards can allow for different operating systems to be uploaded to particularly stubborn hardware. Despite firmware being difficult to load to various systems, that doesn't mean there aren't great communities that not only maintain and assist with existing firmware, but also ones that create firmware and leave them as open source. Oftentimes, some technical specialists don't trust various manufacturer-provided systems, including me. Open source technology provides peace of mind when it comes to not only understanding if there are shady things going on under the hood, but also with ensuring the security of the code. But is any of this legal, let alone ethical? Ethically speaking, there is nothing wrong with gaining access to information stored on a chip, so long as the chip is in a device that is lawfully obtained. However, from a legal standpoint, there can be some variation depending on your country. From a general standpoint, there's nothing wrong with pulling the firmware from a device, but it depends on what you do with it. 
Dumping the firmware to inspect it for personal reasons or security research is one thing, but dumping it for corporate espionage or malicious hacking reasons is another. Ensure that you understand the laws in your area before conducting this kind of research. If this video sparked your inner hacker, hit that like button and subscribe to get more information on the latest gadgets used for penetration testing and bug bounties. Make sure you hit that notification bell to never miss the next video. Leave a comment down below with some of your own firmware discoveries. Until next time, happy hacking! Check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.